Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're looking at carving a circle into segments in Illustrator. We're going to look first at Illustrator 2015 and later because there's a new tool there that we'll use and then we'll swing across to earlier versions of Illustrator so you can see what your options there would be. Before I start this video, let me tell you where you can find additional Illustrator training of mine. I have courses at udemy.com and in the description below are coupon links for all of those courses. I also have classes at Skillshare. Again, a coupon in the description below includes an offer at least as good as the current Skillshare offer. Generally, my offer is even better. If you sign up for Skillshare, you get access to thousands of classes there, including over 200 of mine. And of course, if you enjoy this video, give it a thumbs up, hit the notification bell, subscribe, comment, share, you know the deal. Okay, let's swing back to Illustrator and get started on Illustrator 2015 and later, that's CC 2015 and later. Go to the ellipse tool and drag out a circle. I'm going to fill my circle, but I'm going to remove the stroke just so that things are a little bit easier to see. So in Illustrator CC 2015 and later, we got these new live shapes. So if you drag on this handle here, you're able to divide your circle up into the kind of segments that you want. Now, if you want more accuracy, go to Window and then Properties. Now, it's not immediately apparent in this dialog where those options are. You'll need to click this little icon here to preview the more options. This rotation rotates the entire shape. So if we rotate the entire shape 45 degrees, we're still keeping the angle we created. It's just the shape is rotated. This is where we get the angle that is being removed from the shape. So if we want a 90 degree angle removed, then we'll just make that 90 degrees. And if you want the other 90 degrees, so if you want this piece taken out and this piece left in, then you'll just click this icon to invert the pie. So it's as easy as that to make segments of a circle in Illustrator CC 2015. Let's swing across to what would happen in earlier versions of Illustrator. Again, let's go to the ellipse tool. Again, let's drag out our circle. Now, in earlier versions of Illustrator, if you want a half circle, what you can do is just click here on this top anchor point and just press delete and you get a half circle. In fact, you could have deleted any one of the four anchor points. Now, let me just show you something that might bite you here. If you add a stroke to this shape, you'll see that the shape is actually only the half circle. It doesn't extend across the entire shape. If you want the stroke to go all the way around the shape, you have to join the path. You do that by selecting the shape with the selection tool, choose object and then path and join. And that joins it to make it a closed shape. And so the stroke goes all the way around the shape. Now, let me just turn that stroke off for a minute. Now, if you wanted to make a quarter circle, you may be tempted to go and grab this anchor point and delete it. The problem is that you don't have an anchor point here to hold the thing together. You can create one by selecting over the shape and choose object and then path, add anchor points. What that does is adds an anchor point in between every current pair of anchor points. So you had an anchor point here and one here. So now we've got one here. You also had one here and one here. So now you've got one in here and there was one here and there was one here. And so you'll have one in here. The result of adding those intermediary anchor points, if you like, is that now if we delete this one, this point here is holding that shape. But of course, we had an extra one added in here. So if you don't want a three eighths of a circle, if you want a quarter of a circle, then you'll just go ahead and delete that extra anchor point. So that's how you get sort of regular sectors of a circle in Illustrator, just using the anchor points. But what if you want your circle divided up into things like fifths? Well, let's go and make the filled shape here pink so that we'll be able to see our line next up. I'm going to click away from the shape. I'm going to target black because I want my line to be black. I'll go to the line segment tool and I'm going to drag out a line that goes pretty much to the center of the circle. Now, because we want this to be accurate, we're going to have to work on our shape. So I'm going to look at the center of the circle and I can do that using the transform options. You can get to them by choosing window transform. 
I'm going to select the middle of these nine boxes and position the middle of this circle at a known position. So I'm going to go 1,500 just a known position, that's all we need to have. And then we'll go to the line and we'll go and line up its right hand side, the middle of these nine boxes on the right hand side. And we want this point to be exactly the same point as the center of the circle, that's why we made it a known position. It was 1,500. So now we know that the line finishes at the very center of this circle. We're going to select over the line and we're going to rotate it with Effect Distort and Transform and then Transform. At this point you'll make a decision as to how many pieces you want your circle cut up into. I'm going to say I want it divided into five and so this is the mathematics. You'll always type 360 and then you'll divide by whatever number of segments you want. I want five so I'll divide by five. I want the rotation point for this line to be the middle point, the point that we actually lined up with the middle of the circle. So out of these nine boxes, the rotation point is going to be the middle one on the right hand side. And then we just need to set the number of copies and the number of copies is one original plus four copies. So that makes our five. So whatever number you put in here is 360 divided by, and I said five, then you're going to add one less than that in the copies box and that's all you need to do. And so Illustrator has now given us the lines that we can use to divide this circle up. Just click OK. So that's the only dialog that has any mathematics in it and it's fairly simple math. You just decide how many pieces you want, how many sectors you want of your circle and Illustrator will do all the math for you. So We've got our line, we're going to choose Object Expand Appearance because we want this to be expanded into the component lines, not just a line with a transformation on it. So if we go to the Layers panel, let's see what we've got here. We've got a whole series of groups, each with lines in them. Let's do Object Ungroup, Object Ungroup, so that we just have our paths, that's all we need. So let's select everything, the lines plus the underlying circle. Go to the Pathfinder palette and click here on Divide. Illustrator uses those lines to divide the circle. So now if we go into this group here, we've got five individual segments of a circle. Of course, these can all be broken out of that group by choosing Object and then Ungroup. And you can test it by just pulling these apart. So we've divided our circle into five different pieces. Let's go and get rid of all of that and let's look at one final option. And that is the Arc tool. So I'm going to click on the Arc tool and the idea is that you just draw out an arc. But that in actual fact is not going to work for us. So I'm just going to delete it. You'll know from experience probably that when you select a tool like the Rectangle tool, if you click on the document, you get a dialog allowing you to set the parameters for your rectangle. Same thing happens with the Arc tool, but not quite so successfully. Let's have a look at it. I've got the Arc tool selected. I'm going to click once in the document. We get a whole lot of settings, but we get no preview as to what those settings are going to give us in terms of a arc segment. And there's a space here for a preview. So let's have a look and see what's happening. First of all, I want to just grab some colors to use because that's going to be helpful in just a minute. So let's go and grab a blue and a pink so that we'll be able to see in a minute exactly what's going on. We'll go to the arc tool and instead of clicking in the document, we'll double click on the arc tool. And what that does is it fills this area up with our preview. It's really weird behavior in terms of Illustrator. I don't know why they don't give you the preview in the dialog when you click in the document, but that's the way it goes. So if we want a quarter circle, for example, we'll type in the X and Y axis as being the exact same length. It doesn't matter what it is, they just have to be the same. This would give me an arc. If I want it to be a closed shape, I'll select closed. And if I want it to be filled at the moment, you can see that this is blue matching the stroke color here. If I want it to be filled, then I'll choose fill arc and then I get a pink fill. Now the base along the X and Y axis just changes this shape to be in a different rotation. You want the slope to be 50. If the slope is anything other than 50, it's going to barrel out or it's going to suck in. So the value that you want for a regular quarter circle is going to be 50. 
And then you can select on these little boxes here should you wish to rotate the shape. So you can set it up to be the exact quarter circle that you want. When you're happy with the settings, click OK. Now if the shape doesn't appear in the document, just click once in the document and click OK again because the dialogue will be preset with the settings that you had chosen previously. So there are a number of ways that you can make segments of a circle in Illustrator, depending on what version of Illustrator you're using and just how big you want your segments to be. I hope this video has been of help to you. If it has been, please give it a thumbs up, click the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, share it with your friends and comment as well. Until next time, I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me here on my YouTube channel.